Welcome to Plex Pro Week. My name is Eric. I'm one of the product managers here at Plex, coming to you from our northernmost campus in beautiful Anchorage, Alaska, otherwise known as my house. I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about something that's certainly near and dear to my heart and one of my favorite features in Plex, and that's live TV. Now, somebody once said that sooner or later, everything old is new again, and we've certainly seen that with the reemergence of cassette tapes, mom jeans, and Kate Bush, but in the video space, something similar has been happening for a couple of years now with the humble home antenna. So as much as streaming services have kind of sliced and diced the media landscape, something that continues to maintain sometimes exclusively access to best content available is broadcast television. Whether that is exclusive sports with the NFL, college football, or other sports around the world, uh, TV series, live local news. Over the air antenna reception is a great method for bringing additional content into Plex at no cost. So one of the things we're gonna talk about today is some of the components that you'll need to set up and configure live TV in Plex. Uh, we'll briefly discuss antennas, antenna selection, uh, tuners, uh, and then of course, getting all that set up in your Plex environment. So strap in. Grab a cold beverage and let's get into it. So right off the bat, you're gonna need a Plex server. And while we're not gonna cover the setup and configuration of a Plex server in today's video, Linus Tech Tips uh, has just done a video that covers Plex server installations, I believe on a variety of devices. Once that's done, then it's about adding components to your Plex server to unlock the potential of local over-the-air television. For me, where I would start is to probably go to one of the vendor pages for somebody that uh, sells hardware in the uh, over-the-air reception space. So here in the States, uh, two big names would be Channelmaster and AntennasDirect.com. So both of them have tools that allow you to enter in your home address and get some sense of the channels that are available to you based on your geography and a handful of other questions. From there, they'll generally point to the type of antenna that you'll need. So it could be a indoor antenna um, like this Flex or this Eclipse antenna from Antennas Direct. These are nice. Uh, they're relatively simple to use and install. You would just uh, peel off the, the adhesive backing here uh, and then you can slap this to the wall or preferably uh, in a window. If you're in an area that generally has good indoor reception, you're in a metropolitan area, you're free of obstructions, uh, an indoor antenna is a great simple solution to um, start building your over the air solution. For those of you that may be somewhat geographically challenged, certainly like myself, uh, you may require a, a little bit more heavy duty solution in the form of an outdoor antenna. So I do have an outdoor antenna uh, installed on my roof. And even then, based on my foothills nature of my location, um, I'm still a little bit challenged with some of the tower locations, but I am able to get the bulk of my major broadcasters, ABC, NBC, CBS, PBS, etc. All right, up next, let's talk tuners. So you've got your antenna set up, whether it's inside, outside, you've got your coax run. That coax cable with your signal has to go somewhere. And the TV tuner is what your Plex media server uses to tune those frequencies received by your antenna. Uh, I have a handful of um, examples here of different tuners that are available today. Uh, apologies to my international friends. These are US specific devices, but there are international variants, certainly widely available uh, in other countries. The most simple tuner that I have is a fairly straightforward uh, single tuner uh, USB stick. Uh, this is from Hop Hog, and essentially you've got coax on one side and USB on the other. Once you have your Plex Media server set up and running, you would simply connect your coax, plug the USB into the server, and you're off and running. Another device that is a little bit more flexible because of its connectivity is uh, this tuner from HD Home Run. This is uh, their Quattro, uh, Connect Quattro. It's a four tuner uh, tuner, which means that 
Plex could, in theory, tune or record four channels simultaneously. Same story here, you would have your coax input from your antenna, and you would actually have Ethernet out. So this device connects to your local network, and this tuner would be available to any device on that network. So if you had your Plex server in another room, uh, on another Ethernet outlet, um, you could have this, in theory, positioned wherever your coax maybe comes into your house if you had Ethernet in that location as well. So there could be some distance between the devices. And uh, essentially, any device that's on the network, any Plex server that's on the network, would have access to this tuner once it was set up and configured, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. The last example of a tuner that I have here is one that's actually built into a NUC. Um, this is from the fine folks at Simply Nuck, and what they've done is they've created a lid-based solution where they pulled off just the stock flat lid and added um, a four-tuner tuner card to this lid, so it's kind of an all-in-one unit. So you could literally load Plex Media Server onto this Nuck, connect your cable to the coax, and it's kind of an all-in-one solution. One other thing that I would add on the HD Home Run, when we talk about setting up a tuner, setting up an antenna, kind of trying to get that antenna adjusted so that you're pointing at the right towers, uh, if you do go with the Silicon Dust uh, HD Home Run device, uh, an app that I've found extremely useful is Signal GH. Um, unfortunately, it only works with HD Home Run devices. But that's something that will allow you to see the signal levels on each tuner and each tuned channel. And you can sit there with your phone and move your antenna to kind of, you know, get it dialed in just right signal level wise. And it will give you real time feedback so that you know that you're pointed uh, in the best position possible. So just a little side tip there. I will go run downstairs and reinstall my HD Home Run Tuner. I think we'll start with this one and uh, we'll go through a configuration process. Be right back. All right, we got the Silicon Dust HD Home Run Connect Quattro installed in my closet downstairs. Remember that's a network tuner, so I've got antenna coming in, ethernet going out to my switch, and my Plex Media Server that's obviously on the network should now be able to see that. So let's jump into Plex and take a look. I'm gonna go up here to settings. I'm gonna go down here to manage and live TV and DVR. And we want to set up a Plex DVR. Okay, so the device is actually seeing two separate tuners. If you remember on that NUC I showed you earlier, it did have an integrated PCIe tuner. Um, it's a four tuner max linear. That's not currently connected to the antenna, so we're gonna set that one aside for now, but it does see the silicon dust here. And the silicon dust had already completed a channel scan, um, so it does see 36 channels. So it's already identified that this is an antenna-based device. There are some satellite or cable-based tuner devices out there. Um, so there could be uh, an additional selection if uh, you're in a country or a state or have a service provider that does still have cable card, um, uh, cable card tuners available. Country, this is going to determine um, lineups that we'll get to in a minute and we'll go ahead and set up the device. It's asking me for my postal code. I am in 99503. Next. So basically, Plex went out. It looked at my zip code. It identified the OTA, over-the-air channels, that should be available based on my zip code and brought them in here. So on the left side, we have tuner channels. These are the channels that the HD Home Run has scanned and picked up. And then on the right side, we have EPG channels. Now, Plex will attempt to match, based on the tuner information, a EPG channel, Electronic Program Guide. So that's going to be um, from like a Grace Note or a TiVo. Um, in, in our case, it's Grace Note metadata that we partner with. Um, it will attempt to match these channels. So if I just kind of scroll through here and do a quick scan, it seems to pretty much have uh, successfully synced up and matched 
channels based on call sign, channel name, and channel numbers. So I am going to go ahead and accept this and continue. But really quick, uh, if I did need to correct a match, if you just click on the drop down here, if it is a channel that exists in the lineup for your market, you could manually fix a match if you needed to. Um, in addition to that, if there were some channels that, you know what, I, I just, there's never a time where I'm going to be interested in watching anything on that channel. Um, then you could certainly uncheck channels and omit them from your final lineup. So for me, um, I happen to know that these three channels at the end here are actually radio stations, um, which some uh, different parts of the country do that. And then certainly internationally, uh, there are some places where radio stations are available on OTA feeds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uncheck these three and then hit continue. So now Plex is gonna start downloading uh, the EPG data, the schedule data for these channels. Um, it can depend on how long this takes to complete uh, based on you know, the size of your lineup, um, how many days or maybe weeks of guide data is available for your market. Uh, but you'll also see the other thing that it's, that it's offering up is, hey, you know, we still have this other tuner that we're able to see. This is the integrated tuner on that NUC. Do you want to set this one up as well? Um, again, I said we don't have connectivity to that, but if we did, we could set up the, the device, um, assuming that it was connected to the same antenna, it would just go through the same channel scan process, and you would now multiply the number of tuners that are available to you for watching or recording. So, you know, like we said earlier, the uh, HD Home Run is a four tuner device. This integrated tuner is also a four tuner device. So in theory, we could have eight tuners available to us. Um, you know, maybe for my 30 channel lineup, that's a bit excessive. I don't know that I would have eight channels that I would want to watch and record all at once, but it's certainly something that you could do. Another thing that you can do, and this is more of a, a definitely a pro user move, is there are some people that live in parts of the country, certainly in the US, maybe in other countries as well, where you can receive uh, distant transmissions, maybe from two distinct television markets. So in theory, you could have two antennas pointed in two different directions, connected to two separate tuners, and import unique lineups from each of those two markets and combine them in Plex. So that's, a, that's another way that you could use Plex um, you know, in, a, in a very powerful way. So let's go ahead and jump into the guide here and see what we've got. Uh, not a whole lot yet. We're refreshing the guide data. This will continue. I mean, for me, uh, historically, it's maybe about 30 minutes or so before we start to populate guide data. So let's go ahead and shut it down here and I will jump back in when I have a loaded guide. All right, we're back. We've got the guide loaded up and let's go ahead and dive back in here. So here are my channels from my HD Home Run tuner. If we click through some of these, we can see some things that are airing now. So another thing you might notice, um, this is my test server, so I already had it configured slightly. Uh, one of the things that Plex is offering now is a suite of free streaming channels that are streamed directly from Plex. So no tuner needed. Um, if you were a user that, uh, that didn't want to dive into a local Plex media server and set up an antenna and configure a tuner like we are here today, then there's a suite of channels that are available directly from Plex that any user can watch. Uh, here in the States, I think we have a little bit over 300 channels available now. Depending on the country that you're in, those may vary. Um, but we have these under a tab called Plex channels. So if we scroll through here, we can see a variety of content from news to, uh, you know, kind of daytime uh, talk shows to movies and some sports content, uh, cult classics. We've got some, uh, some classic Kung Fu. So really there should be a little bit for everybody. Um, and this is something that, you know, now with Plex is a great way to maybe augment your own, you know, local over the air lineup that you have. 
So if we jump over here to the favorites tab, you can see that I already have a handful of Plex delivered channels that I've favorited. I could jump in here and catch a TED talk or cruise on over to uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 and grab some classic MST3K action. Going over one tab, you'll see my Plex NUC. That is the server that I configured with the HD Home Run Tuner. Um, if I want to go ahead and start favoriting some of my most watched channels, it's going to kind of be a, a pretty typical list of usual suspects here. Definitely anything NFL football. So we'll favorite NBC, we'll favorite Fox, and we'll favorite CBS just by clicking on the heart icon here. Jumping back over to my favorites tab, you'll see that they've been added to the bottom of my favorites list. If I want to prioritize those up towards the top, then I can just select reorder, grab these and move them up. And that way, on any given weekend in the fall, my most commonly watched channels for my user login are right at the top of my favorites list. That's a great thing. We've got NFL football action on now. Um, let's go ahead and set up a recording. Now, while I am a Denver Broncos fan through and through, ultimately I'm a fan of all things NFL. So let's go ahead and record all NFL events. Uh, if Alternatively, if you wanted to, you could select just uh, at least in this instance, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers games or Dallas Cowboys games. If you only are a fan of your team, totally cool. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab all events. Uh, any NFL airing uh, on over the air is probably going to be um, a, a new event. Um, so we'll leave that there. And then we already have our TV show library selected. If we click on show, show advanced, um, we have a couple options here, uh, in markets that are still showing, uh, both SD versions of a channel and HD versions of a channel, you may want to select HD only. Um, I certainly do here, although I do think that our SD channels were just recently, uh, end of life in this market. Um, allowing partial airing. So this is a setting that, um, you know, let's say there's something that interrupts your recording. Let's say that the power goes out and your Plex server goes down. Um, when your server comes back up, obviously that airing will have ended because you lost power. But if you have allow partial airings enabled, then the server could recover once power is restored, the guide is restored, it could go out and recapture that airing. So I like to keep that checked. And then of course, uh, you know, games could run long. So um, you can add some time here and we'll just say we're gonna add 30 minutes to the end of this scheduled recording, uh, just in case we go into overtime. Um, additionally, if you wanted to limit your recordings to a specific channel, you could do that. Again, that kind of goes back to, you know, potentially an SDHD type of scenario. If you know one channel to be the HD and one channel to be the SD, then when you configure your recordings, you could limit the channel accordingly. Uh, limit to airing time. Um, maybe you record a show that repeats. Uh, this would be common with uh, like a news broadcast. Maybe you want to record the five o'clock news at five o'clock. Uh, here in our market, I think they re-air the news, at, you know, at, uh, at maybe 2 a.m. Um, as a repeat broadcast. Again, I wouldn't necessarily be interested in that second airing, so I might limit it to just the, the, uh, the original broadcast. Uh, detect commercials. So this is a functionality of Plex, um, which is fantastic, especially if you're recording series or movies, where once the recording is complete, uh, Plex will go through, mark the uh, start and end points of a commercial break, and uh, delete those commercials from your recording, and then reconstruct your recording so that it is essentially commercial free. So that's something that you can either um, detect and delete, or detect and mark for skip, where you get an on-screen prompt that says skip commercials. You can limit the number of recordings that you want to keep. Um, I am blessed with a fairly large server, so I typically tend to 
save everything, uh, typically until I have burned through a series um, or I'm, I'm, you know, maybe done with a movie. I'll just purge that on my own manually. And then there's a, an option here to delete episodes after playing them automatically, which again, I'm a bit of a hoarder, uh, so I tend to save everything indefinitely until I take care of it manually. So from there, I go ahead and hit record. And now I've got a series recording set for NFL football. And I imagine here in a couple minutes that it will start uh, recording this game if it hasn't already. So again, you know, going back to Plex channels, um, the other thing we have across the top here are different genre-based tabs for not only our content, um, but also integrating your content from a local tuner. So if I jump over to sports here, you'll see that it has detected that sports is playing on my NBC channel or channels, and it has populated those events in line uh, in the sports tab. Uh, similarly, if I go to news and opinion, I'm going to get news programs off of my local antenna. So it really is a, a powerful system and powerful platform to not only offer, you know, viewing and recording functionality for your local content that you care about, but also augmenting um, what might be in some markets a fairly limited uh, lineup of channels that are broadcasting over the air where you live and allow you to pull in some Plex channels that, that has content that you might be interested in. If we go across the tabs on the top here, um, we have a couple of different options. What's On uh, simply presents uh, content that's available in more of a hub view as opposed to a guide view. Uh, some people do prefer that. So you can scroll through here, see what's on now, what's on coming up for a handful of kind of high level categories news, sports, kids, movies, etc. Next, we move on to DVR schedule at the top. And this will basically do a, show you a calendar view of any recordings that are currently in progress, like the NFL football game here, um, or recordings in the future. So on my screen here, you'll see the existing uh, Dallas Buccaneers uh, NFL game we set up today. But since we didn't restrict it to a team, uh, we did any NFL, uh, tomorrow night's Monday Night Football on ABC is set to record tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Um, let's go ahead and jump back to the guide. Let's just set a couple of additional recordings. Oh, side note, um, while Plex does offer uh, a suite of channels that stream directly from us, uh, unfortunately, rights permissions prevent you from being able to record those channels. So I would note that a lot of this content is available in our AVOD library as well. So if you see something on a channel that you'd like to start from the beginning, you can jump over to AVOD and do a search and see if it's there. Um, one of the things we're looking to do in the future is link airings to AVOD titles so that when you're in the guide, you can simply click start from beginning and you can seamlessly watch it from the start. Uh, but jumping back into our guide for our local tuner where we can record, um, let's uh, say I'm going to go ahead and record, let's see, Big Bang Theory out here. I want to record all episodes. These are all repeats, so there's no new airings. Let's go ahead and grab that. Let's do a little Star Trek Deep Space Nine, all episodes. New and repeats. Let's go ahead and get that set up. And let's see, Third Rock from the Sun. Let's grab some of that. All episodes. New and repeats. Record. So now if we jump back to the DVR schedule, we'll see a much more populated calendar of things coming up. The other thing that we can do in the event that, you know, all four tuners, you know, were in use or there was some conflict between tuners is we can set recording priorities. So if there is, uh, you know, somebody else in the family comes along, sets a recording, it conflicts with something, um, you know, already in the schedule. Aside from being alerted, uh, you can also set priority of recordings if they did not resolve that conflict. So if your uh, series recordings are all set to be priority, anything that came along later, um, would ultimately not end up recording unless somebody took action to override. So recording priority here, 
You can just kind of drag and drop stuff around, change priority, and that's that. The last tab that we have is a browse tab. This is kind of like library view for those of you that are already managing uh, your personal media libraries. So this will take uh, all of the TV that's available to you, dump it into one giant view state, and you've got a couple of um, filter options here where you can um, display as individual episodes, you could display as a show. Uh, so if there's multiple uh, episodes coming up, it's not going to show you a poster view for every single episode. You can see here it collapses them down and then notes how many episodes are coming up in the existing schedule load. Uh, clicking into one of these, you would see the upcoming episodes that are scheduled to air. Jumping back, you can sort by name or you can sort by original air date. Um, if you want to filter to just movies that are upcoming, you can do that. And then you can, of course, filter to sports. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Whether you're an existing streaming only user or a current Plex Pro already using Plex Media Server to organize and stream all of your personal media content, we hope that you found this video informative. As always, if you have more questions about the features and functionality of Plex, please visit us at plex.tv. Have a great week.